Welcome to our Tuesday night live Bible study. I'm glad that you're with us. I tell you, this is just one of my favorite times of the whole week. <laughs> and I happen to have Gary Lukey with me. He's the vice president of Caris Bible College. Is that correct? That's correct. The head of World Outreach. I'm not real big on titles, but I know that you are indispensable. <laughs> Matter of fact, I was telling him and Greg Moore, who runs our Caris Bible College here in... Um, Woodland Park just a few minutes ago that, man, I praise God for them because we got so much stuff going. If it wasn't for them, I'd be pulling my hair out. So. Man, it's a blessing. So anyway, real quickly, uh, we're going to have a Bible study. I'll teach for maybe 25, 30 minutes maximum, and then we're going to take your questions, and you can interact with us. This is actually being broadcast live. We already have people from many different nations as well as many states and you can send in questions, and we give away a prize every week. This week, we're giving away the effects of praise. So I'm going to let Gary give you all of these details because uh, I don't understand how to do <laughs> Facebook and chat and all of this, but he does. All right. Well, good this to be is here, Gary Lukey. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, before we get on to your teaching here, we just have a few greetings for people. We want to welcome back. Um, some of the regular attendees. And we have a special message from Charlie from Indiana, Pennsylvania, saying, I haven't missed a single study and have been richly blessed. Thank you, Andrew Womack. Oh, wow. Thanks, so, Charlie. Yeah. That is great. And you know, we were talking about Debs from the UK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if she's missed one, but I don't think she has. You have she's, Ruthie, Debs. Yeah, Ruthie's uh, another yeah, one. Yeah, Mrs. Jones. Jones and Cliff, Rose, Heidi, Alan, Elaine, Lucelle. I mean, there's a lot of repeat that come on. And so and we, we got a lot of all. different countries, too. We have a lot of different countries watching uh, from, the, obviously, the UK. Canada, Sri Lanka, Nigeria, Jamaica, Australia, South Africa, uh, South Africa, Singapore, Zimbabwe, Ghana, New Zealand, Bahamas, Philippines, India, Norway, and El Salvador. That's wow. who's listed. So and those far. of you in some of these time zones, it's bound to be in the middle of yeah, the night. Yeah. You are fanatics. <laughs> I, I pronounce you a fanatic officially. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And it's we awesome. have some first-time attendees that we want to welcome. Fian, uh, Vetsu, I believe, from Jamaica, Mez, Paul, and Jess. We want to welcome you for the very first time and uh, say thank you for uh, watching and uh, tuning in. So before we get to your teaching, Andrew, uh, we have a few things that we want to mention. Uh, first of all, your next Truth and Liberty live cast will be seen Monday, May 21st um, at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So we want to uh, um, just recommend you come on in and uh, Truth and Liberty. And if I'm not uh, mistaken, net. is that Randy Forbes? That I don't have. Who I'm pretty sure that it's against. Randy Forbes, and I tell you what, you do not want to miss this. Matter of fact, we've been doing it every other week, but we are going to do it two weeks in a row oh. just because he's here and available, and so we're going to take advantage of that. Last night, we did a Truth and Liberty broadcast with General... Uh, Jerry Boykin, and I tell you, it was awesome. Oh, that's great. That guy, I mean, we are, who needs Fox or <laughs> CNN? You can tune into our programs and get all of the news that you need. Well, you're awesome. talking about some really special guests coming in this summer. We're going to have Mike Martin Huckabee. Mike Huckabee. And, uh, I mean, God, it is amazing the people that God is connecting us with. Uh, this is really making an impact. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So I just lost my screen there. But um, so we also want to let everybody know there's a Karis Business Sum Summit coming up June 11th through the 13th here in Woodland Park. So we want to invite you if you have an interest in business-minded Christian business principles. That's going to be a great conference. Uh, that's June 11th through the 13th. You could register at www.karissummit.com. And uh, we also have gospeltruth.tv we want to let you know about. We promote that pretty regularly. And, uh, Andrew, this is one of your special projects going on. i tell you what, uh, Gospel Truth TV is awesome. If you haven't watched it, it's 24 hours a day, and we call it Andrew and Friends because it's people that you can trust. You know, we're different. We aren't just the same voice. Uh, there's little differences, but it's safe. Everybody's going to be preaching the true gospel, and it's just a great deal. Mm, that's awesome. awesome. So um, now we want to go to the giveaway. Uh, so this week we will be giving away the effects of praise here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that's an awesome book, and uh, so that will be the giveaway. 
And uh, you are automatically enrolled if you sign up for the Bible study notes, awmi.net slash Bible study. And if you have not signed up already, we just encourage you to go to that website, sign up, and you will automatically be enrolled for the weekly giveaway. And last week's winner of Karen gave away a product, um, Only Believe in God's Blessing on Our Children. That was a, a CD and a DVD teaching. Uh, congratulations to Ruth Gingrich. Uh, you are the winner, so we will be sending out uh, that CD and DVD to you, and uh, congratulations on that. So, as Andrew mentioned already, uh, this is an interactive Bible study. Andrew will be teaching uh, for the first 25 minutes or so, and we'll be uh, taking questions. I'll be reading them off, but you don't have to wait till the very end. We just encourage you to be sending in your questions um, throughout, and uh, we'll be reading them off. And uh, so we just encourage you to interact uh, with us uh, throughout this uh, time. And, uh, you know, if you've been blessed by the ministry, we just want to encourage you to give back to the ministry. There's some instructions um, on your screen to uh, give back to the ministry. You've been such a blessing to so many people, Andrew, and they're very appreciative of everything you're doing. So we're There are some expenses to this. I think it's around $2,200 per broadcast which isn't a lot compared to as much as I spend on television and things like this. And we're reaching people all over the world, so it's big bang for your buck, but there are some expenses, yeah. and it would be wonderful if you would help us do this. Yeah. Let me also mention that we have people standing by at our phone center right yeah. now. And if for some reason you didn't want to just text something and talk to a person through text, if you had a prayer request, or if I say something tonight that interests you and you want to go back, they have access to everything that we're saying. They have access to every teaching that I've ever gotten, every story that I've ever told, every scripture that I've ever taught on, and they can tell you exactly what it is. So you can call that number at 719-635-1111 at 719-635-1111, and they'll get you that information. Awesome. So we're it? ready to hear what you have to say. Tonight. All right. So I just think that it's historic what's happening. You know, it was just yesterday on the 14th of May, 70 years ago is when Israel was officially designated and became a nation. And then the very next day, which would be today, the 15th of May, they were attacked by every one of the Arab nations <coughs> around them. And I mean, this fledgling nation that had only been in existence less than 24 hours won and survived. And since that time, they have just prospered. And during the uh, Six-Day War that happened in, when was that, 1967? Do you remember that? Uh, I don't remember. I think it was 67. <clears throat> and they had that Six-Day War. I actually heard testimonies from some Israeli uh, officials and they were in the military, and they said that they would see planes fly over them into clouds, and they'd never come out. Oh, wow. Wow. I really believe that God supernaturally protected Israel. And mm -hmm. so what I was wanting to do tonight, you know, with the move of the U.S. Embassy into Jerusalem yesterday, that officially put our stamp of approval on uh, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and it has incensed the Palestinians and, you know, I just wanted to comment on this from a scriptural standpoint because there are many people that have grown up that honestly do not know what the Word of God has to say about all of this, and they listen to the information that we're fed today. And I tell you, you are not getting the full story. You are only getting a skewed view of this whole thing. Matter of fact, I read an article today about one of the newspapers. Again, I'm not going to mention the name of it, but they reported on the violence that happened yesterday, and it was at the very end of the article that they mentioned that the protests were sanctioned and promoted by Hamas and that they caused this hmm. and stuff. They left the impression that it was Israel just being an aggressor. Hmm. And so you aren't getting the full picture. And so I wanted to go to some scriptures and show you some things that the Word of God has to say about this. I believe that we are seeing the fulfillment of prophecy. And, you know, I'm assuming that the vast majority of people who are watching this live Bible study are believers, and yet there's a lot of uninformed believers. There's a lot of Christians today that don't know the position that the nation of Israel holds, and there's so many scriptures. I can't go into everything, but I just wanted to turn over to Jeremiah chapter 3. 
You know, if you're in a position where you can read these scriptures, I would encourage you to do so. And the first part of Jeremiah chapter 3 is a rebuke to the nation of Israel. And let me, a little bit of background. Israel was actually split into two kingdoms during the days of Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. And so the northern ten tribes were called Israel. The two southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin, were called Judah. And so you need to remember that. And in the first part of this third chapter, it is rebuking Israel. Israel had already gone into captivity at this time. God had prophesied that because they forsook him as their God, he would forsake them. And he gave Judah another, I forget the exact period of time, but it was over a hundred years that Judah, the nation of Judah, lasted beyond the time that Israel had been carried into captivity. But in the first part of this third chapter, the Lord is saying that Judah has sinned even worse than Israel did. And that because of it, God is issuing an invitation for Israel to come back and once again inhabit the land because they have been justified by their sister Judah who sinned even worse than them. So that's the context of what he's talking about. And right here, listen to this. It says in Jeremiah chapter 3, in verse 12, it says, Go and proclaim these words towards the north, that's towards Israel, the northern ten tribes. Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scat uh, scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. That's a reference to them worshiping uh, all of these different idols, and they set up these uh, idol-worshiping places under the trees. In verse 14, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And then listen to this, verse 16, and it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land. So this is talking about after the return of Israel from bondage, which you know that has never happened until 1948. Mm. May the 14th, 1948. So this is talking about the fulfillment of Israel once again becoming a nation, which there is nothing else in history. Again, I could go over to other scriptures and show you this. I just am going to make a reference to it without having to turn to it. But there is no other nation in the history of the world that has been conquered, dispersed among the people, for over a thousand years. And uh, then they return and become a nation and they revive the language. Did you know that when the Israelites came back to the land uh, and they revived the Hebrew language, that the Hebrew language actually was a dead language. It was written and stuff, but nobody was speaking it. And it was basically a dead language. They had to revive it. And there is no precedent for this in the history of the world. Now think about that. Man, if that doesn't speak to the intervention of God, I don't know what does. And if you took all of the scriptures, how he promised that he would bring them back, and in the latter days there would be a, a nation again, it is a direct fulfillment of prophecy. This is not just natural occurrences. This is not natural things that are happening. God has established that nation again. So that's what he's talking about. He says, it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, saith the Lord, they shall no more say the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind. Now this was unthinkable at the time this was written because the ark of the covenant of the Lord was the central figure of the worship. Now it was housed in the temple, but it was the central thing. It, it carried the Ten Commandments were in there and the ark of the covenant was, I mean, an indispensable part of worship. And it says that when they return and after they've been multiplied, they won't even talk about the ark of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind. Did you know, again, this was impossible in those days, and yet this is exactly what we see happening today. Nobody knows 
where the Ark of the Covenant is. Even though I've heard some people say they know where it is. It's in <laughs> Ethiopia and different places. I mean, uh, nobody knows where it is. They don't talk about it today. And then it goes on to say, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall uh, that be done anymore. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all of the nations shall be gathered unto it uh, to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers." Again, those of you that may not be familiar with Scripture, when the nations were split, the nation of Israel went into captivity to Syria, and then the nation of Judah went into captivity to Babylon, and it was prophesied that they would come back. But this is prophesying that there would no longer be the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah, but they would be combined. There's one of the minor prophets that gave a prophecy about this, and he had him take two sticks and write on one Judah and on the other one Israel, and he put them together, and he said, in your hand they will become as one. And that was another prophecy. This is another thing, see, that shows that we are living in the days of fulfilled prophecy because today they don't call it the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah. The whole nation is called Israel. So I bring these verses out to say that this is prophesying what we see in our day and time, and in this uh, 17th verse, it says, At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their own heart. And, you know, there are just so many scriptures about Jerusalem. Let me just pick out one right here. But in uh, Psalms chapter 22 and verse 6, it says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And I could just go on and on and on. In, in Psalms 137, it talked about the people that went into the Babylonian captivity. And it says that if I forget you, O Jerusalem, may I forget the you know, my right hand, may I forget all of these things. And Jerusalem has been proclaimed in Scripture as the capital of the nation of Israel. And when they return, this verse from Jeremiah chapter 3 says, it would be the throne of the Lord, the head of the kingdom. And I believe that Jerusalem as a sovereign nation has the right to proclaim Jews, Jerusalem as their capital if they want to. Now, it has been done. Jerusalem has said that since, uh, since 1948 when they first established the kingdom. But no president has ever enforced this because of political reasons. And even in 1995, the U.S. Congress passed a resolution that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel and that they would move the embassy, the U.S. embassy there. So that was done in 1995. That's been, what, 22, 20, yeah, 23 two. years. And every president since then has said that they would do it and nobody did it. And all Donald Trump did was just do what the U.S. Congress has said for the last 23 years and he had enough guts to do it. <laughs> And by doing so, it has rejuvenated the Israelis because finally somebody is not playing, paying politics with them. And this leads me into another thing, and that is that there's a lot of people that don't understand that this is a fulfillment of prophecy. And to me, that trumps everything else. You know, if this is what the Word of God prophesies, and if this is what God has to say about it, nobody else's opinion really matters to me. I am 100%... Uh, supportive of God and His agenda. Did you know when I got drafted, I actually applied to be a conscientious objector because I wasn't excited about war. And so I said, I don't want to go killing people. And I went and talked to them and they said, to be a conscientious objector, you have to say that you would not kill a person or defend yourself even if you were being attacked. And I said, well, I, I can't say that. So uh, I prayed and asked God to be a chaplain's assistant, which I thought was a non-combatant position. It turns out you're the bodyguard, so it didn't, but it kept me out of my problem. So anyway, my point is I am not a 
a hawk. I am not a war monger. I went ahead and got drafted. I went to Vietnam. But I told them when they were talking to me, I said, I'll go fight in this war, but if you ever fight against Israel, I'll defect in a heartbeat. <laughs> I am not going to fight against Israel because over in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3, it says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And there are many scriptural examples. So anyway, my point is, I am a supporter of Israel and I believe that these are scriptures that are coming to pass. And so therefore, I'm, I'm in defense of what President Trump did moving the embassy there and supporting Israel. Now, I know that there are some people who say, but look at what happened. The Palestinians rioted, and there were I, at this time, there was 58 people killed and over 1,000 that were wounded. And people will sit there and say, see all of the problems that that caused. But let me point out that for 70 years, the American presidents have refused to honor their commitment to Israel and have appeased the, the Arabs around there trying to conciliate them. And what good has it done? Has it solved the problem? Absolutely not. And last night I had General Boykin on our Truth and Liberty live cast and I was interviewing him and we talked along these lines. And you know, he, he was involved with Delta Force. He was involved in Black Hawk Down and he has been one of the top military advisors and, and generals in the army for many decades. And he just said emphatically and gave example after example that you do not solve this problem by appeasing them. And that in a sense is what we've done. We have tried to appease uh, the people that are against Israel. All of these nations around Israel, the next day after they were uh, you know, established as a nation, the next day, the Arabs attacked them. I mean, and to this day, they are sworn to pushing Israel into the sea to the utter, complete destruction. They do not want peace. They have said openly they don't want peace. And Hamas gathered, I forgot the exact number. It seems to me like it was over 100,000 people and had them storm this boundary between uh, the Arab states and Israel and they thought that Israel would let these people into their country. They have found a number of those people who were shot and killed, that they were known terrorists and they were armed and equipped to go and carry out suicide bombings and things like this. And instead of giving in, Israel just defended its own borders and people were killed and it's bad. But see, that's not Donald Trump or Israel that caused that. They have a right to establish that as their capital, it was Hamas that made this because they knew that they would get uh, you know, PR out of it to where they would make Israel look bad, but all Israel did was defend itself. And let me also say this, that you know there what never has been a Palestinian state. And General Boykin made this very clear last night that there were nomads that lived in that area. Palestine is a name that referred to that area. The Jews are Palestinians, if you want to be technical about it, because they were in Palestine. That area, that was a name given to an area, not to a people. And there never has been a Palestinian state. There were nomads living there. They did not own the property. They traveled with their flocks and things like this. And uh, the Arab states around there could have absorbed them because there was relatively few. I mean, just a few thousand compared to like an entire nation. They could have absorbed them. And the Arabs actually told these nomads that were living in that area to withdraw because if they went ahead and Israel became a state, they were going to attack them. And they said that they would return them when they defeated uh, the Israelis. Well, of course, they didn't defeat the Israelis. And so anyway, this whole thing about the Palestinians have been dispossessed. They never did possess that. They were nomads. They were squatters living on the land. And if you want to trace it back far enough, Israel got that land given to them under Moses and then Joshua, and they have inherited it, and it's been their land for thousands of years. So anyway, this is a little bit of background <laughs> about things. And I tell you, that we are seeing the fulfillment of prophecy. And let me just turn over and read one last scripture here. And there's so much we could say about this. But in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus was teaching on this. 
And he said in verse 32, Matthew 24, 32, this is all talking about the end times, about the Antichrist, about the wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, all of these kind of things. And he says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. And again, if you were to go back into all of this, a lot of this is centered around Israel uh, coming back to this land. And it says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And so this is talking about the end times. Jerusalem was a big part of this, the Israeli nation. And he says, when you see these things come to pass, the generation that sees that will not pass away until he comes back. So man, we are getting close. Gary, I, I, I know that the Lord is leading me to do things here that it's gonna take the rest of my life and I believe I'm going to live a long, healthy life. So I'm not necessarily thinking it's going to happen in the next 24 <laughs> hours or the next week because some of the things the Lord's led me to do mm. would be useless. But I believe it could well come in my lifetime. And I believe that the generation that sees these things come to pass will not pass away. So, man, these are exciting times. And I tell you, we are seeing a fulfillment of Scripture. It also says right here, I'd have to look up this verse, but it says, when you see these things come to pass, then lift up your eyes, for your redemption draws nigh. So rather than be perplexed when we see this, we need to actually be encouraged, because I guarantee you, this thing's about to wind down, and we're going to see Jesus return, and He's going to be absolutely victorious. So that's awesome. <laughs> Amen. Awesome. Amen. Well, that's great. We have some great questions that have been submitted, and we just want to continue to encourage you to send them in throughout, and we'll try to get as many uh, asked to you as possible. But, you know, you just touched on it. Judy was asking, Andrew, do you believe that the rapture is near? I mean, you answered that for the, I mean, well, your well, let definition me, of rapture, I know. That, let me uh, <laughs> say that, you know what, I don't believe in the rapture as traditionally taught. And I hesitate to say that because I don't have time to defend it. And some people are taught the rapture so strong. Matt, I've seen churches that say pre-millennial, <laughs> you know, <laughs> church. I mean, they have it on their signs. And it's like, if you don't believe in the rapture, mm. then you aren't saved. I believe in the second coming of the Lord, and I don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. And that immediately makes some people panic, like, oh, no, you're, you're going to go through this terrible tribulation period. We're going to have to have the mark of the beast, and we're going to do all these things. Did you know the Israelites went through all of the plagues that came on the land of Egypt, but instead of it being oppressive for them, it was actually a blessing because it says that like when they had darkness over the land, there was sunlight, not just natural light from a candle, but sunlight inside of the houses while it was pitch dark outside. That would have been exciting. That would have been something to see. When everybody else's cattle were being destroyed by the hail and by the plagues and stuff, their cattle lived. When everybody else had the firstborn die, their, their children lived. And I believe that the book of Revelation is written to show what's going to happen to the unbelievers. But there are going to be believers that go through there, and it is going to be an awesome time to see. Now, I'm not saying that there's not going to be bad things happen, but um, it's not the way that it's been traditionally taught. And anyway, <laughs> I know I'll... Open up a can of worms I'll on that probably one. lose a lot of people, but I, if, if I had time, I think I could prove that to you. I don't teach on this because even though I can disprove the rapture the way it's been taught, and I believe I can disprove it, I can't tell you exactly how it's going to be in for me to pull the rug out from under body, somebody and not give them something else to stand on is just counterproductive. So I don't uh, really teach on that. I thought years ago you had a teaching on it. Is that still offered? <clears throat> no. In, uh, it's not? No. I, I did have a teaching on it, but yeah. it's been 30 years ago and we don't offer it. But okay. I have taught on it in the yeah. past. Okay. Very good. Back when I was young and ignorant. <laughs> Carrie from Facebook is asking, why are people saying that many Palestinians are dying because of the capital moving? They're blaming Israel. 
And again, yeah, right. that's because of misinformation. But uh, I heard uh, one news source, it was a Fox report, and then I heard this General Boykin last night uh, at two different sources that confirmed that Hamas specifically amassed like 100,000 or more people at the border and told them to charge the border because there's relatively few Israeli guards there, and they thought they would overwhelm it. And among them, there were suicide bombers, some of the people that were killed. They actually found some of this equipment and stuff on them, and they were going to overwhelm. It's like there's a barbed wire fence separating. I saw it on video, and they just thought that they would be able to overwhelm them. And um, so anyway, all the Israelis did was defend their nation because they knew that these people were coming for no good, and it's a shame that people were killed. Mm -hmm. But it was not Israel's fault, it was Hamas' fault. And mm -hmm. Hamas, again, is totally anti-Israel. There is no compromise. They are sworn to the absolute destruction. They hate Israel, and so they're the ones that are responsible for it. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to some of the riots that happen in this nation. There are George Soros and others that are paying people to go. Some of these people that were hooded, the, what did they, do you remember, Intifada? No, I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm sorry, I'm not more versed. If it's not in the Bible, <laughs> I'm just not real established in it. But anyway, some of these people that came and were mm. in these things and were beating people up, they have literally found out that they were paid by liberals to go and oh. to be there and to incite yeah, yeah. riots and cause this that. problem. Yeah. And, and it is being stirred up. And so um, anyway, Israel is not to blame. They are a sovereign nation. That's just the same as if we make Washington, D.C. our capital and people don't like it. Well, mm -hmm. you don't like it, but there's a right and wrong way to protest. In my way of thinking, mm -hmm. These people that have protested and these people that charged the border and tried to overwhelm Israel and sneak in, they confirmed that this was the right thing to do because who are the people who are opposed to Jerusalem being the capital? People that are full of hate and that are willing to kill and lie and, and you don't want to appease people yeah. like that. Yeah. And another thing, before we get off on that, I believe that President Trump and the way that he dealt with North Korea and North Korea, you know, just a couple of months ago was stretching their muscles and saying, we're going to attack uh, these islands and we're going to do these things. And I've got nuclear weapons and I've got a button. And Trump said, I've got nuclear weapons and I've got a bigger <laughs> button. And he did not back down. And he put sanctions on North Korea that they have done partial sanctions in the past. But this time what he did, he sanctioned their central bank, and 80% of all of their commerce goes through that one bank. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, he not only sanctioned that bank, but anybody who wanted to do business with that bank, if they violated this, they mm -hmm. would have been sanctioned. And it brought Kim Jong-un to his knees in a short period of time. And just two months ago, nobody would have believed that he was willing to talk to the president. He was willing to meet with South Korean president and that he's willing to talk and possibly disarm and stuff. And it's because he did not appease them. Those people understand mm -hmm. uh, strength. They understand being tough. And I tell you, the way that our politicians have promised them and said things and have them sign a piece of paper and don't follow through. It's just, it's the wrong approach. So anyway, Israel is not to blame for the death of these people, even though they were the ones that fired the bullets. They were in defense. Mm -hmm. We haven't had a president like this one before. Nope. <laughs> I, I, you know, I was a Reaganite. I believe yeah, Reagan was yeah. one of the greatest presidents that we've ever had in my life. And even though I certainly disagree with so much that <laughs> Donald Trump has done in his past, <laughs> and I disagree with with a lot of the things that he says now, it seems like sometimes the only time he opens his mouth is to change feet. <laughs> but you look at his actions, yeah, yeah. and I believe he's, he's got effective. to be doing... one of the most effective presidents yeah. in just a short period of time we've ever had. And here's another thing people don't know. Did you know that Donald Trump's approval ratings after one year in office is one or two points ahead of Barack mm. Obama? Wow. People don't know that. Yeah. But at, relative to that time mm -hmm. in the first year, he's, he's at least equal 
to the approval ratings of Barack Obama, mm -hmm. and people don't know that because, again, the liberal media is it. just out to destroy him. Mark from Facebook is asking, Andrew, do you think with this move regarding the embassy, this is the next step to a peace agreement and later a third temple? You know, I can't, I'm not qualified to prophesy that, but let me say that, like I said, for 70 years, appeasement and trying to p please everybody hasn't worked. This is a new approach, and I certainly think it has every bit as much chance of, of causing these things in a peace agreement as, as the way we've done it for 70 years. That hasn't been working, so I can't predict exactly what the response is, but you know, I think you, you just have to do what's right. And regardless of how that plays out, you have to do what's right. Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking with my granddaughter, and she was asking some question. I forgot how it came up. But if we were persecuted, and if somebody was going to kill me unless I renounced my faith or something, would I continue to believe in the Lord? And I said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they said, you wouldn't even lie if it cost you your life? And I said, no. And she says, well, what if they were going to kill me or kill <laughs> your son, her dad? And I said, I'm not going to lie for anybody under any circumstances regardless. I said, I do what's right, and regardless of what the consequences are, if it's my death, I will do what's right to the best of my ability. And she was just shocked. <laughs> and anyway, my point is that, see, today we don't have those absolutes. People say, well, I think that they should have the right to have their uh, embassy in their capital that sure, that's right, but it's going to anger this person. It's going to do this. And so they don't do what's right based on potential problems. And you cannot live your life that way. You have to get to a place to where this is right. I am going to do what's right. If it hair lips the devil, I am not going to look at the consequences. You can't have a relative morality and just do it if it's convenient. You have to say this is right. This is wrong, and this is the way I'm going to live my life. And it actually makes life so much easier because you don't have to get up every day and decide, what am I going to do? <laughs> I, can, I can tell you 10 years in the future I'm going to still be out operating in integrity because it's right. And you don't even have to pray about it because nope. you're established. And that's exactly what Karen spoke about last week was just having the principles, founded on the principles yeah. and living your life you know, on the Word. So that's good. Scott from Chattanooga is asking, is there any prophecy related to Iran? You know, there are, and it's not the word Iran used in there, but there are, for instance, Ezekiel <clears throat> chapter 38 talks about Gog and Magog, which most people believe that that's talking about Russian, Russia and all the Slavic nations up there. So you aren't going to find that terminology used. Now, Persia is what Iran used to be, and uh, it's mentioned in the Bible. And again, prophecy is not my strong suit. So I would ha I'd have to go look it up in order to be able to read these things to you. But uh, I will say this, that anybody who comes out against Israel, I can guarantee you, they're going to lose. <laughs> that's, that's the way I believe. And I believe that prophecy shows that. And so I would not be on the wrong side. I will say this, I've got a friend, Kamal Salim, hmm. who... Uh, was a jihadist, and he came to America to practice jihad and kill people, and he had a car wreck. He was convalescing in the doctor's home and got born again, and now he <clears throat> travels and speaks. He spoke in our school, and he's a Christian, and he is. he was just here a couple of weeks ago, and he shared with me prophecies, which this is the first time I've heard this. I can't verify it yet. I haven't studied it out. But he uses some scriptures to talk about how Ishmael would make Israel jealous. And he believes that there is going to be a turning to the Lord among the Arabs hmm. and that they will actually hmm. become befriend Israel and make hmm. them jealous. And he, he believes that that's the way peace hmm. is coming to the Middle East, which, uh, yeah. again, I'm not qualified to say that, and I don't think anybody else is predicting that, but God can do anything. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Denise Hall is asking, in the end times, the USA is not part of the big battle. Are we Revelation 17 and 18? Is there any part that the Again, US is I have heard people talk about this, and it talks about 
uh, I forget the exact wording, but it's talking about the young lions and all of the isles thereof and stuff. And there is nothing that mentions the United States by name, but there are people who say that the United States is in prophecy under these different names because at the time the Bible was written, of course, the United States didn't exist. And uh, from one of the prophecies that I'm aware of, it says that when Israel does become a nation, it will fly upon the wings of the eagles from the west. And, you know, if you were riding back 2,000 years ago and you'd never seen a plane, how would you describe a plane? And coming from the west, that could very well be descriptive of the United States and the western uh, powers, European and things like that. All of those things are west of Israel. So I believe that the United States is in prophecy, but not mentioned by that name. Mm -hmm. Lisa Lala, I believe. Lisa Lala. Oh, she had a question today. Did she? I answered, yeah, in the afternoon. Well, good. I guess it's the same one. I've never heard another name like that. I had to look at it to pronounce it right. Do Jews believe in Jesus? And so Jesus is coming back for people who don't believe he is the Messiah. Can you explain that? Well, you know, the Jews as a whole, as a nation, they do not ha have not accepted Jesus as their Messiah. So there are scriptures that talk about Israel that I take and apply to me. Because again, Romans chapter 2, if I had time, we're just about out of time. I'm just going to paraphrase it. But in Romans chapter 2, it says, He is not a Jew who is one outward in the flesh, but a true Jew is one in the heart. And then in Romans chapter 9, the apostle Paul talked about that he longed for his nation and he wished that he could even be accursed so that they could be saved. But then he says, have they all not believed? He says, no, because it's not, it's not in the flesh that you're a Jew, it's in the spirit. So there are a lot of scriptures about Israel that apply to the church today. But let me put this but in here. This is important. <laughs> Some people have taken that and said that the church has totally displaced Israel and they call it replacement theology to where there, are, there is nothing about the Jews today. It's all about the church. I believe that the church uh, is certainly benefiting and receiving many of the promises in the Word of God about God's people, but there are still prophecies about the physical nation, whether they are born again or not, just because God is going to keep His Word. And I read some of those in Jeremiah chapter 3, and of course there's many others. So there's a dual fulfillment. Some of the things are being fulfilled through the church, but there are still prophecies to the physical nation of Israel. And even though they aren't born again, God is faithful to them, and He promised He would reestablish that nation. And again, I'm never going to fight against Israel. <laughs> I'm not going to be on, caught on Good that choice. side of the fence. <laughs> Good decision. Mary on Facebook is asking, will you ever take a group to Israel? I have taken a group to Israel, <laughs> and I did a tour, and I got into the Jesus boat on the Sea of Galilee, and we just anchored there, and for an hour and a half, I taught them everything that happened, and we toured all of these places. So... I've done it already. I don't know that I'll do it again. I, I don't know. It's just one of those things I did. I enjoyed it, but I don't know. It's not one of my focal points. Yeah, yeah. There you you go. got another one? We've got two minutes. We do. All right. So Katrina from Missouri, why do Christians and even Jews seem to hate the state of Israel? Why are they more sympathetic with the state of Palestine? Well, personally, I don't know any Christians that hate the state of Israel. Now, there, I wouldn't say that there aren't, but I would say that probably they're Christians in name only. People who are, let me say it this way, people who are spirit-filled, who are into the Word of God, who study the Word of God, I guarantee you they love Israel yeah, because we are commanded so. to do it. You would think so. But those who do hate Israel, I believe, because, again, it's misinformation. They feel like that the Jews displaced the Palestinians, which I talked about that earlier. There never was a Palestinian mm -hmm. state. They feel that the Jews are the ones that are doing all of these terrible atrocities, and it's a propaganda. It's not the truth. Uh, the Jews are the ones who have been attacked, and the Jews right now have the upper hand because America has been their ally and has equipped them and I guarantee you, the Jews are probably the most elite fighting force yep, on the that. earth, and none of the Arab neighbors can compete. And so at the moment, every time the Arabs do something, they're being beat by the Jews. But uh, I think it's misinformation. 
that makes people do this. So anyway, we're out of time again. Goes and by it fast. seems like this went really quickly. <laughs> and I know I may have, might have stirred some things <laughs> up. And, you know, I hate, to, I hate to become political because people discount the word. And um, I don't want to do that. But at the same time, man, this is just the fulfillment of prophecy. And I think it would have been... Um, I would have been, oh, I don't know what the right word is, but I, would have, I wouldn't have been right <laughs> if I hadn't have pointed this out because this is monumental, what's happening. And praise God, I think some awesome things are happening. So just like the scripture says, man, when you see these things coming to pass, lift up your head because your redemption draws nigh. Amen. So, man, Amen. we're excited to have you. Amen. We've still got people on our phones, 719-635-1111 if you would like to call and get some information. We've got people on chat that will be chatting with you for the next couple of hours, so you can take advantage of that. And thank you for being with us, and praise God, we'll see you again next Tuesday. God bless. I've got David Barton with me and we've got some special primaries coming up that I want him to encourage you to get out and vote. Yeah, we do. Just, just this week, uh, we're looking at primaries May the 15th in Idaho, Oregon, Pennsylvania, and Nebraska. So those primaries this week, Christians have to be involved in those primaries. And if you're saying, well, I don't know who to vote for, we got help for you. You go to the Truth and Liberty website, truthandliberty.net, you can click there and there's voters guides in those races showing you what the people believe so you can cast an informed vote. So we got to get Christians out in this so that we can make sure that the righteous rule uh, Proverbs 29 too. And I'm telling you these midterm elections could be more important than the last presidential election because the whole thing is in the balance about whether we can maintain the majorities that we've got. So get out and vote. Remember that we have these primaries coming up this week. Get out and vote and be a part of the answer. In an economy where profits are up one day and the next day they're nose diving, you need to be smart with your investments. You're invited to the 2018 Karis Business Summit in Woodland Park, Colorado. You'll hear top business leaders share the biblical principles behind their financial success, and you'll learn kingdom principles that could take your business from average profits to excellent returns. So make plans now to attend the 2018 Karis Business Summit, June 11th through 13th. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I just want to thank you for being a part of our social media. We are seeing some great things happen. I just wanted to share some of these testimonies with you of things that have happened recently that we got testimonies through the postings that we put on social media. One of them says, I thank God first for allowing me to read on this page, Hallelujah, I was a Muslim, but by the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, He called me to become His son, and I am a born-again Christian. Praise the Lord. Man, that right there is awesome. Another testimony says, I was healed tonight while watching Andrew on Healing is Here. I've had chronic back pain, been to many doctors, and have been taking medicine strength Motrin for more than 15 years. I am completely healed and free of pain for the first time. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Andrew, for the healing word. So these are things that are coming out of the social media uh, ministry, and I would like to encourage you to be a part of this, because these testimonies could be amplified many times over if we just had more people participating in it. So thank you for being a part of it. God bless you, and share this uh, ministry with other people. Hello, this is Andrew Womack, and I'd like to encourage you to check out our Gospel Truth TV. That's gospeltruth.tv. It's an internet-based television network, and you are not only going to get my teaching, 
but you are also going to hear instructors from Karis Bible College. You've got well-known people on there like Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis, Keith Moore. These are all people that are friends of mine. We have differences and variances, but we're all preaching the same thing, and it's a safe place to be. You are going to be blessed. So check it out. It's 24-7 gospeltruth.tv.